What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This video is about one of the most iconic Supreme Court cases ever, so let's get right to it. Tinker vs. Des Moines is a case so iconic that it's possible you even heard of it before you started taking AP Gov. Hey, real quick, do me a favor and hit that like button before you forget. Okay, so it's December 1965 and the Vietnam War is raging. Bobby Kennedy has called for a Christmas truce to the war. A group of students in Des Moines, Iowa met together and decided that they wanted to support that truce, and they would do so by wearing black armbands to school for the rest of the holiday season. In fact, let me allow Mary Beth Tinker herself to tell you what her motivation was. Free speech is important because you have something to say. There's something you want to say. And what we wanted to say was that we were upset about the Vietnam War. Now, the students planned to start wearing those black armbands on December 16th. But guess what happened? By December 14th, school principals had found out about the plan and they had a meeting of their own. And at this meeting, they created a policy that said that they would ask students who were wearing the armband to remove them. And if they refused, the students would be suspended until they were willing to abide by that policy. You already know what's going to happen next. The students, Christopher Eckhart, Mary Beth, and John Tinker, refused to remove their armbands when asked to by school officials, and they were suspended. So do students have free speech at school? And does the school prohibiting the armbands violate that free speech? In a landmark decision, a 7-2 majority held that students do have free speech at school. And in order to justify being able to suppress it, school officials would have to prove that it would materially and substantially disrupt the discipline and operation of the school. Okay, so is this case protecting or limiting free speech rights? Because it kind of sounds like it's doing both. This is absolutely a victory for free speech rights. The court had formerly alluded to students having free speech in the flag salute case of West Virginia versus Barnett, but this is the most explicit statement by the Supreme Court that students do in fact have free speech at school. By the way, we're talking about public school here. Private schools have a lot more leeway in the restrictions that they can make on their student speech. Check out this quote from the majority opinion. It says that students and teachers don't shed their constitutional rights at the schoolhouse gate. I love that quote so much. You have constitutional rights outside of school, and now you and I have them at school as well. The reason some students might get confused is because the court here does carve out an exception. If the student's speech would substantially interfere with the discipline and operation of the school, it can be limited. So it's true that you don't quite have as much free speech at public school as you do outside of school, but again, the important thing here is that it established that students do in fact have free speech at school. And the holding made that clear, expressly stating that students are entitled to freedom of expression of their views. And how about that first sentence? State-operated schools may not become enclaves of totalitarianism. I'm sure your government teacher isn't totalitarian, but I'm guessing we've all had some teachers who needed to hear that particular quote. Remember, I told you this was a 7-2 decision. Well, here's an excerpt from a dissenting opinion. Normally, I try not to judge the opinions in the case, but I just kind of find this one funny. I can't help it. It has a certain old man yells at cloud kind of charm to it. But yeah, he's apparently very worried about students having free speech and the revolutionary permissiveness that this decision will single-handedly usher in. Okay, to be fair to him, students probably were better behaved in the past, so I guess he's at least partially right. The constitutional principle here is obviously about free speech, but as usual, I want us to go a little bit deeper. It's talking about students' right to political and symbolic speech. Remember, these students weren't saying anything with their voice, they were letting the armbands do the talking for them. The court held that those armbands represented pure speech, which is protected. And when those speech rights come into conflict with the principal's desire to maintain order at school, speech wins. Let's go back to Mary Beth Tinker to find out how she felt about their victory. Yes, we needed our free speech rights to say that, but it wasn't first and foremost in our concerns. We didn't realize at the time that that was going to turn out to be the important victory in the case. John was also more focused at the time on the Vietnam War than their place in First Amendment history. Yeah, that's, that's a really important point. We were protesting the war, and our victory was a First Amendment victory. I was happy, but the war was still going on, so I, I didn't 
feel like we had that final sense of victory that we really wanted. So do you feel like you have free speech at school? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Until next time, this has been a Money Production. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button if you haven't already. You know, I appreciate you guys so much. Do me a favor and check out the AP Gov Ultimate Review Packet. I created it. It has tons of great things to help you prepare for this exam, study guides, practice questions, multiple choice, everything you need. So check it out. See you next time.